Hi, welcome to NAB 2025, day one at about quarter past four. Uh, my name's Simon, uh, I'm a product specialist here at Blackmagic Design. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is take you through some of the headline features around Resolve 20. So the first headline feature is something called IntelliScript. So if you have a piece of media that's been scripted, um, but it's quite a long piece of media, it has multiple takes, there's silences, there's mistakes. Uh, what you can do is you can use a script uh, and it will auto edit uh, the media for you. So I can show you that on this machine here. I have an interview in here and as you can see, uh, Sean takes a little while to get going, but this is actually a scripted uh, interview. So what I can do is I can right click, I can say, um, create new timeline using IntelliScript. I can grab the text like so. And there basically what it does is it chops up the interview according to the script. Where the line, where lines have been repeated, where the interviewees made a mistake um, and done another take, the IntelliScript picks up the same bits of dialogue in the, that are identified in the text. So you then have multiple takes. So again, I can toggle these takes on and off and decide which one is the best. So that's the first AI tool, again, hugely time-saving, so you don't have to sift through all the mistakes. It'll just cut everything for you and you can decide on the takes. Uh, and a lot of the, the kind of rubbish in the, t in the interview has been removed. So the next sort of headline new feature that can save you a huge amount of time as an editor is the AI Multicam Smart Switch. So if you have a long piece of media, say a podcast or an interview, um, you can, yes, you can sit there chopping camera angles, but now what we've got in Resolve is something that'll automatically cut a multicam clip for you. So as you can see here, I've got a simple podcast studio. I've got three people doing a podcast. I can very quickly make a multicam clip of these. So if I, oopsie, if I right click, and I can say create a new multicam clip using clips. Um, they're synced via time code. So again, very quickly, I can simply grab that multicam clip and put it in the timeline and open up the multicam. Now what you have in the resolve is this new icon here that says AI multicam smart switch. So what the AI does, it looks at basically the mouths that are moving in the um, video and it can sense when people's mouths are moving. So basically what it will do is it will auto cut your multicam for you. So again, I can just click on this. Again, I have lots of durations in here. The minimum edit duration I'm gonna put up to just over a, a second maybe. Again, if you can automatically detect wide angles. Um, so again, if it goes sort of quiet, you can also sort of auto cut back to a wide angle. Um, so if I hit analyze in here, what it's gonna do, it's gonna go away, analyze my video, work out who's speaking, and then automatically cut the multicam clip for me. And there we go. So that again, if you're an editor, it's a hugely time-saving uh, function simply to be able to have long multicam clips cut automatically. And then again, you can go away and fine tune them um, after the analysis. So one of the new functions in color is actually an update, but it's a really big update. Uh, and that's to the Magic Mask. So the Magic Mask has been in Resolve for a couple of versions, but what we've done is updated it. Um, and basically now what you have is a Magic Mask that again, kind of makes tracking even easier. It um, allows you to mask in much greater detail. It's much quicker. Um, and the easiest thing to do is just to kind of show you how it works. So um, if I take a look at this shot here, I've got some hands in the shot and maybe I just want to kind of identify them. So again, what I can do is I can go into my magic mask. And now in here, instead of the old version where you used to kind of drag um, lines, basically what I've got to do is just click a point 
and I look at the magic mass. And again, it can work out what I am trying to track here. Again, I'm gonna switch this to better. And again, I can just keep adding points to things I would like to add to my magic mask. So again, it's like you've got a hand here as well. And now if I track this, the tracking is really, really good. So again, if you've got things moving sort of across the screen, if you watch this hand here, it's gonna move off the screen. And as you can see, it takes the tracking with it as well. Whereas in previous versions, what it may have happened is the magic mask may have kind of got stuck onto something else. So it gives you a much cleaner key um, on this new magic mask. So again, what I can do now is simply pipe that alpha channel in. So again, if I want to make the map a little bluer, I can simply, you know, dial in this is a bit of, oopsie, oh, let me, rev, let me actually reverse that. Let me just invert my note key, there we go. And now I can push sort of blue into the map and as you can see, I can maybe change the temperature of it. So the magic mask does give you, yeah, a much, much uh, cleaner selection process and it's much better with more difficult tracks. So we have some now something called uh, the Chroma Warper. So again, this, what this allows you to do is it allows you to set a select uh, a range of hue in an image and push it and then allow you to manipulate it so you can push it into slightly different hues. You can adjust the exposure slightly um, and it's really straightforward to use. So again, if I take a look at this shot here, I can just select in the sky. It puts uh, a point in my Chroma Warper and again, now what I can do is just start to push this more towards blue. And as you can see, it will allow me to kind of push the sky where I need it to be. I can add additional points. So I could put an additional point in here and I say, you know, I just want my foreground to be a little bit more orange, maybe not too orange. So again, it's a nice way of manipulating hues. You don't have to qualify them. It's not kind of as limiting as the color slice because again, I can extend or reduce my chroma range. So with the orange color, if I want to add more to it or less, I can adjust the chroma range. And again, I can also, uh, for example, with the sky at this point here, I can adjust the exposure as well. And as you can see, it's a nice way of just manipulating the exposure of a hue without going too crazy. So again, it's another really nice tool to get you to be able to pick certain colors in an image and manipulate them the way you want. So yeah, the audio assistant, if you have um, you know, a project like this where you've got effects, you've got um, music, you've got dialogue, uh, all just thrown together in a project and being totally unmixed. And um, what you can actually do is you can actually go and um, using the AI tools, I can go into the audio assistant. And again, I can pick a, a delivery standard. So if we're doing things for broadcast, we have broadcast standards in here. I'm just gonna keep it simple now and do it for YouTube. So if I do an auto mix, you can see it'll classify the audio, it'll mix the dialogue, it'll mix the music, it'll um, basically look at the sound effects and ambient mix and then do the final mastering. And there we go, that's done. So basically what's that done? It'll have done um, some uh, levels, it'll have done the levels, it'll have done some audio sweetening, it's labeled the tracks in here. So again, it's just a really quick way of getting your audio tracks organized and mixed. And then from there you can fine tune them before you deliver. So uh, all the AI tools that are currently in the public beta run on the machine. Um, we have one uh, tool that isn't in the public beta, but was talked about in the release video, which is the scene extension. So we have sort of an AI scene extension um, that does require going up to the cloud. That's at the moment why it's not in the public beta because you know we've got further testing to do with this. Um, again, it's gonna go up to Blackmagic Cloud, so there may be a pricing element to it. Uh, so again, this is gonna come further on in time. But everything that I've shown about in AI and everything in the public beta is on the machine.
So, um, like we, with anything, um, it depends on what you're doing, depending on the machine spec you need. Uh, obviously, some of this AI processing is quite intensive now. So, you know, if you are running something like uh, a Mac Studio M3 um, Ultra or an M4 Max, or you have like a 4090 NVIDIA GPU that has, you know, the tensor core processing on it, you're going to get some good results. Um, you know, we, we never do sort of official specs, but you know, again, with this, it's AI, you need, I'd recommend something with neural engine learning. And again, the more powerful, maybe a silicon chip from Apple or Nvidia or AMD, AMD GPU, um, you know, the more powerful the, the, you know, the system you're running, uh, the better the result is going to get. Don't get me wrong. You can do this. I was doing this. I have a, just an M3 MacBook Pro. Um, it's a max, uh, but I was getting some good results when I was kind of running through this. So again, you can do these things on a laptop. Some of the processes take a little bit longer, but you know, you're not waiting hours and hours um, for the processing to be done. So all the features that I've shown you today, um, they're actually part, I've just shown you a few. We've got 115 new features, um, but they're available for download now uh, in DaVinci Resolve 20. Uh, it is beta at the moment, so we always recommend, um, you know, if you're doing client work, please don't update uh, your project to a beta because it is a beta. We put things out to a public beta um, so we can get customer feedback and fix anything that may need fixing in it. Um, a lot of the features that I have showed today with AI, um, they are studio only features. So um, you can try quite a lot of the new features in the free version, but a lot of the AI stuff is in studio only.